Hey, hello friends, welcome to my channel. In this Azure DevOps tutorial series, today let's discuss about YAML file. In our previous introduction video about Azure pipelines, we saw a very quick introduction about different ways to create pipelines, right? One is using YAML, another one is using a classic UI editor. So, in order to create a pipelines using YAML, first we need to understand what a YAML is, what are different properties of YAML, what are different uh, what are the how does a yaml file look like and all right so let's try to understand all the concepts with regards to yaml in this particular video okay so this video is for people who wants to understand basics of yaml like i'm i'm just gonna give you very basic level of information which you all need to know to work with azure pipelines okay so let's jump on to definition so yaml stands for ain't markup language okay initially it was actually called as yet another markup language or recently only it has been renamed to ain't markup language okay so yaml is a human readable data serialization language that is often used for writing configuration files just like json and xml i hope many people might have used uh, the configuration files like json and xml right so these are very popular in the industry it's right? similar to that you can imagine yaml as a configuration file all right so I said it is a human readable data serialization language, right? So when I said, uh, first we need to understand what is a serialization, right? So serialization is a process when where one or application or service that has different structure and is written in different set of technologies can transfer data to another application using a standard format. Okay, so if you read this once again, if you have to, uh, no, if you were, if, if you want to, I, uh, if you have a data structure that is written in different set of technologies that can transfer data to another application using a standard format okay so if the, if you have a data structure which is written in different set of technology and you need a standard format for each and every application to understand right so you can so that is when serialization becomes very much important so yaml will help uh, in this serialization okay in other words, serialization is about translating, converting and wrapping up data structure in another format. Okay, this is a single line definition which will sum up about uh, how to use ser uh, YAML for serialization. Okay, so as I said, YAML is actually used for writing configuration files for different DevOps tools, programs, application because of its human readable and intuitive syntax. Okay, F before going further i have downloaded a sample yaml file i will just show you for reference so that you can understand uh, the further slides very easily when you see a visual representation of a yaml okay so i have downloaded this invoice.yaml from the internet just for our uh, understanding okay so you can see it started with three dash and uh, we have a uh, like field called received colon uh, and value so similarly there are a lot of other values right so this is how a yaml file will look like let's try to understand what are uh, now uh, what are this like what syntax does it follow uh, why do we use uh, colon why do we use hyphen so what are uh, basically we'll just try to understand the structure of this yaml okay so if you keenly note the yaml as a uh, uh, suffix yaml is suffixed with dot yaml or in some some cases you can use dot yaml as well okay so that is the file uh, suffix all right so now let's jump into the presentation again so here it is so so first we'll try to understand what are the different features of yaml to create a, create a yaml file you, you can use dot yaml or dot yaml file extension okay before writing any yaml code you can add any three dashes at the start of the file you can also use three dots to mark the end of the document YAML also allows you to write multiple YAML documents in a single YAML file, making file organization much easier. Okay, so we saw the uh, fi uh, sample file, right? So it started with three dash and it ended with three dots. Okay, so this will mark the start and end of the document. Okay, similar to this, this is this is what we call it as a single document. Similarly, if you want to add multiple documents, you, can, you need to start with another three dash. Okay, so that is a general format people have been using to work with YAML okay next is continuing with this uh, features of YAML you need to understand the intendation okay so in YAML there is an emphasis on intendation and line separation to denote levels and data structures in data level and structure in data 
okay so this indentation is almost similar to the one we use in python like if you are uh, very much and uh, if you have used uh, writing code in python like you know, definitely you would have used indentation right so this here in yaml also the indentation is quite similar okay so you can see here uh, once we for uh, customer we have like spaces right so this is not space this is so this is not tab this is spaces okay so this is this way you need to intend each and every column or fields that is present inside the yaml for better readability okay so first is you need to focus on indentation next one is tabs yaml doesn't allow you to use any tabs when creating indentation use spaces instead so you, here we saw right so if these and all are not tabs you need to use spaces all right and next is white spaces white pa space doesn't matter as long as child elements are entered in inside the parent element okay so basically this this is what okay so we have a parent here these are child elements so on uh, and so on okay so basically what this states is like you know you can use white spaces in a very intended fashion all right and comment you can use uh, use a comment inside your yaml file using hash character okay so here in this example we do not have anything but in case if you want to use anything you can put an hash and start writing a comment uh, data types although yaml detects auto detects the data types in a file you can specify the type of data you want to use to explicitly specify the type of data you can use double exclamation symbol and the name of the data type before the value for example you know if you look at this uh, sample file here uh, for first name we have dorothy family name we have gail so these both are strings okay by default yaml has the capability to understand uh, what kind of data type it is okay so if, if you can see here for size we have integers um, here for price we have float okay so, but in case for some reason you want to specify uh, you want to use you, you want to specify the type of data in those kind of situation you can use double ex exclamation as shown in this example so here we have used an example called date for example here what will generally happen is it will take it in the date time format so if you want to sp explicitly specify this a string you can use this ex double exclamation followed by the uh, data type uh, value like which is str string and followed by the actual date okay so this is uh, this is another highlight that i want to show about data types okay so now let's try to understand yaml syntax one by one okay there is something called scala scalas in yaml are the data on the page strings numbers booleans and nulls okay so first we'll look about strings okay a string can be something like this you know it can be uh, enclosed it can be written in plain like this with the very first line or it can be enclosed within a single quote or it can be enclosed within a double quotes all these represent a string okay so this is an example of a string the first name last name family name these are example of a string okay next we have something called uh, okay continuing with the strings if you want to write a string that spans across multiple lines so in this example you can see my uh, content spans across multiple line okay so in this kind of situation uh, you can uh, use a if you want to preserve the line breaks you can use the pipeline symbol at the beginning okay you can see i have used a pipeline uh, symbol at the beginning if you want to write a string that spans across multiple lines and you want to preserve the line breaks use the pipeline symbol okay so here if you want to uh, uh, display the value or the uh, content inside it as it is by using the line breaks you then you need to specify this pipeline symbol so output will be something sim very similar to what i am displaying here okay where else if you have a string in yaml file that spans across multiple lines for readability but you want the parser to interpret it as a single line string you can use the greater than symbol character okay which will replace each line break with a space so okay so what we did here is if you want to uh, show the if you want to make your yaml to understand uh, if these strings are spanning across multiple line then you can use a pipeline symbol where else here it is vice versa here you have data that is spanning across multiple lines but you want your parser to actually understand if uh, it is it is a single line so in this kind of situation you can use a greater than symbol at the beginning of the string 
okay so this is this is a little tricky but once you start using it it will be very easy okay next we have numbers okay so numbers expresses numerical data in yaml this includes integers whole numbers floats exponential octals and hexadecimals okay so here in the example we saw few numbers right so uh, we have quantity which is 4 which is a number we have a float value 1.47 similarly uh, your yaml has the capability to understand the data type integer okay and then we have something called booleans and null so booleans in yaml are booleans in yaml and other programming languages have only two states right or either it will be true or false so similarly here uh, you can see f uh, this is our value uh, so this is our field name and we have another uh, field called age so here we c uh, in in the f in the uh, fields you can either mention true or false so which will either state uh, which will depict the boolean values true or false okay uh, here okay so here if you want to change something like for me this is not a ideal place to change it as a boolean value but i'm just putting it for your reference true or false okay and again null values are expressed with the keyword null or the tilde character so here in this example you can see either you can put a tilde character or either you can explicitly call out the value or keyword null okay so it's something like this keyword null okay so this is another thing i wanted to highlight next coming to the next section i want to i want to discuss about collections okay collections in yaml can be sequences or mapping okay sequences means you can imagine a list or an array mapping means you can imagine a dictionary or a hash okay so first we'll look about sequences which is list or array okay to write a sequence use a dash followed by a space okay so you can this is a basic example of how to write a sequence or a list okay so you you can use hyphen and then followed by space value hyphen followed by space value okay similarly you can write uh, a list or an array which is of your convenience okay similarly you can either use this or either you can use something like um, the traditional list that you, you've been using in python right if you've been using python uh, what you will do is generally you will use a normal brackets like square brackets something like this you'll use a square brackets one comma two comma three right so you can use this kind of syntax also in your yaml for uh, for writing a sequence using a list okay so either you use this particular this is very widely used that is why i highlighted this example or you can use this kind of example too okay and next is like yeah i want to show that we can also nest the uh, list values inside so for example here we have an it professional python and azure and i want to show you that there is a sub list okay so devops synapse and data factory which is a sub list of this azure so i am using a space indentation again to highlight this actually devops synapse and data factory comes under azure okay so this is another way of creating a sequence using list or array right next we'll discuss about mappings which is using a dictionary uh, or hashes okay so mapping allows you to list key with values okay so you can imagine a dictionary in a python programming language right so you can uh, dictionary is is a form of putting your data in a form of key value pairs okay so key value pairs are the building block of yaml documents use a colon followed by space to create key value pairs you can look at this particular example uh, like cricket players followed by colon uh, and name is such in age 51 country india matches 500 okay this way you can easily create a dictionary all right so you can either create use this way or you can refer to my python video uh, python playlist uh, about how to create dictionaries and all where i have clearly uh, depicted how to work with the dictionaries you can use that format also here in this yaml file all right next we have something called mapping with a sequence you can see um, here we discussed about dictionaries alone here we have we discussed about sequence if let's see how to combine these two 
okay so here in this uh, example there's something called programming languages i have a name called programming languages and inside that i have a sequence so when whenever we are writing a sequence note that there is an hyphen followed by space whereas in the dictionary you if you note i do not have an hyphen here okay so here whereas in the sequence i have an hyphen in the list right here so when we have to combine these both first i have my programming language uh, followed by colon and then my sequence which is a list okay so this is this is another way of mapping with a sequence this is a, another way of writing collections using a mapping with a sequence next finally we have something called list of objects okay so this is something uh, again very widely used in yaml files you can see this is again like creating a dictionary like first we have cricket players name here and followed by a list of objects when we say uh, list of object means you can imagine it as the different number of entries like for example here i have uh, the details of cricket players okay the first one is details of sachin next is details of dhoni okay so if you note we have only single dash followed by a space for the first item similarly for the name again i have a iphone followed by space okay this way you can create a list of object okay this is another collection type which is very widely used in the yaml file okay so these are the basics that i want you guys to know about yaml file now if you go to your yaml file and try to understand all these things it will make much more sense for you okay so this is an object okay this is a list of object that we saw at the last and um, uh, this is the basic uh, like first we started with three iphone which indicates the beginning of the document followed by uh, this is an example of another dictionary where we have a customer a first name and dorothy first name dorothy family name is something uh, different i change it to boolean right so now you if you look at the entire yaml and now recap to my uh, slides and just try to understand what is the contents that is present inside this file okay so this is a very basic yaml file that i have downloaded from the internet so you can e either download any complex yamls or like either simple ones uh, to understand the different concepts that is present inside a yaml file okay so this i for to beginner to start with you know if you know this amount of information that should be enough for you to work with uh, yaml pipelines yes there are a lot of advanced concepts but uh, do not worry about all these things at this stage will uh, whenever we are working with azure pipelines we'll just we'll discuss one by one when we encounter uh, some advanced concepts okay for now just try to do a recap of all these slides and just try to understand this concept should be more than enough for you to work with azure pipeline okay that's all what i want to cover as part of this video guys if you like this video please subscribe and follow my channel thank you